Hi, welcome to Table Read, the show where I, Aloni, armed with the power of pure cringe, painstakingly craft stories for a vast, indifferent, and judgmental internet. Look away now before you die of secondhand embarrassment. This week, I read Space Camelot. You have been warned. In the depths of space, the shadow of a small rusted vessel scrapes across Europa, the frozen moon of Jupiter. A computer screen begins to ping radar signals from the dwarf planet. The pod bay doors of a small shuttle quickly open as three large rovers drop onto the ice, carving tracks into its surface. But below the thick sheet of ice sits cold and dark water, filled with with the eerie and dangerous shadows of wildlife. Racing across the ice are the three rovers, treads blaring as they face off against each other, each with a different faded stripe across its center. The red-striped rover races in front, passing under massive sheets of ice, shaking the frozen ground below them as the ice sheets fall. The blue-striped rover chases after it, ignoring the danger of the deadly falling ice. The eyes of the driver sitting behind the wheel, Lance, played by Idris Elba, turns to look at a young man next to him, Galahad, played by Michael B. Jordan. Both glance at each other with the same brown eyes. Lance smiles as the rover turns into a massive ledge of ice. It races and climbs up the ledge. Below the ledge, the red rover skates on the ice. The driver, Arthur King, played by Travis Fimmel, from the television show Vikings, with a massive dirty blonde beard and thick eyebrows, laughs with a crooked smile. Imagine a Viking. Suddenly surprised as the blue rover shoots off a ledge and lands directly in front of him, he swerves out of the way, his rover coming to a sudden stop as the third striped black rover quickly stops behind. The driver, a man with long black hair and pouty lips, Mordred, played by Adam Driver, screams at the top of his lungs over the radio. Can you two stop with the pissing contest for one fucking second? We have work to do. Arthur responds. Come on, Dredd. It's just a little race. Lance laughs. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. I win, Artie. He turns off the radio, looks to his son Galahad, pulls up his winter mask, and slaps him on the arm. We got this. Watch your step, kid. He hits a button on the wall and the side of the rover opens up, the two of them looking at the massive tower in the distance, the other two rovers pulling up. Holy shit, it's real? Lance was actually right? Of course I was right. The Calburn is real. Lancelot wipes down the edge of the tower, revealing the name printed on the side, the SS Calburn. The doors open. Lance runs down the spiral staircase in the tower. A small circular table lights up, a projection of a ball made of numbers appears, streams of light moving around its blue form. A voice begins to speak, MRLN, played by Stephen Merchant. Finally, are you ready to go? Go where? The title appears, Space Camelot. Pulpy sci-fi music ensues. The four men stand around the holographic round table. The projection of numbers and symbols takes the form of a rudimentary face. Camelot Station, a utopian society traveling our small corner of the galaxy. It's currently on the edge of the Kuiper Belt, overlooking the thousands of small planetoids that pepper the night sky. And now, it's yours, Captain. Just place your hand on this terminal, and you will be given great power and glory. Lance looks surprisingly at this strange computer and the ominous scanner in front of him. Galahad looks to his father. Do it. It's yours, Dad. Take it. You got here first. You thought it was real. 
You deserve it. Lance looks at the image that appears in front of him. A massive globed city floating in space. He looks at it, pondering what to do. Reaches his hand out toward the scanner. He thinks for a second, pulls his hand back, and steps away from the council. No, I don't want it. What? Mordred begins to take his glove off when suddenly Arthur King touches the scanner. The scanner pricks his hand. He pulls away as the needle enters into the scanner and it lowers into the floor. Hello, Captain. Welcome to the Calvern. What shall I call you, sir? Arthur King? Yes, Captain King. Just call me King. Yes, King. Preferences saved. Shall I plot a course for Camelot Station? Lance is standing in the corner of the room as Galahad walks up to him. What the hell are you doing? My job. You could have owned a city. You could have owned this ship. I don't want it. It wasn't your decision to make. Mom would tell you that you're being an idiot. Do you know how much money all of this is worth? What would Mom think of all this? I know exactly how much it's worth. King, remember, I get my cut. Of course you do, man. Scavengers stick together, equal shares all around. All for one and all that. He gives a crooked smile to Lance. Lance gestures to his son as if to say, See, just as the shuttle they came in enters the doors at the top of the tower, the thrusters begin to light up beneath the surface of the ice. Deep under the cold waters of Europa, bubbles and steam begin to form as the engines power up. The tower begins to shake. Buckle up! It's gonna be rough. I hope this thing's in one piece. Otherwise, we're fucked. Trust me, I'm lucky. It always works out. After decades of stillness, the ice shelf begins to break. A loud, thunderous crack explodes with a cloud of smoke and fog. The ice shifts and melts, turning into a glacial ocean. The tower rises from the ice, revealing a massive silver spaceship in the shape of a sword, two thrusters sticking out from its sides, and a third, larger booster in the center. It blasts at full speed into the stars, just outside the Kuiper Belt. Exterior, the Kuiper Belt. Cold, frozen rocks float and impact each other in space. A large asteroid moves past, revealing the station out of focus. As a projection of the station appears in front of it, ships race by, the center column glowing warm with bright orange light. The projection deactivates, and the station comes into focus. And the difference in the two has been made apparent. The center glowing column is missing. The lights of the station dim from age. The panels that line its side, missing, cracked, and dented. The many ships that used to race around it, vacant and empty. Definitely not the prize we were promised. King's smile fades as he pulls up to the station. What happened, Em? It appears that the central grail is missing. The shields are in a state of flux. The hull is damaged. It's not supposed to be this way. It was in one piece the last time I left it. And when was that? 337 standard years ago. Is anyone on board? The Calburn scans the ruins of the city. It appears to have 1,337 signs of life aboard. No ships, not much food, a plethora of water though. The filtration seems semi-functional. Sorry, King. I might have overhyped this one. Can we enter the station? The ship begins to dock. Executive hangar active. Calculating route. King presses the button. The ship docks. Interior executive hangar. King, Lance, Dread, and Galahad stand as the doors open in front of them. A massive wall of sick, ragged, and hungry people all stand in a darkly lit hangar, staring up at them. Hi! I'm King. The Calburn sent us. They have returned! Our heroes! Have you brought food? Uh... The lights begin to brighten and turn on, and many of the people act as though they have never seen this before. The people begin to bow. Our saviors! The legend is true! What legend? An older leader of the group stands up. Legends! Told in the generations have said that the Calburn will return, and with it a great king who will save us all. Lance stands up and looks at the audience. We're not heroes. We're not kings. We're scavengers. And we can find help for you, but soon we'll be on our way. King looks out at the audience. 
with a crazed look in his eyes. No, what my disciple speaks of is a joke. I am your king, and I will save you. Lance looks back at King and pulls him aside. What are you doing? I'm becoming a king, dude. And what are they going to do when they learn you're full of shit? I'm not full of shit. I am named King, and I do own the ship. Galahad walks up. This seems cruel, even for us. They think we're gods. Dread walks up, excited. Do you know how good this can be for us? They'll worship us. Free labor, trade. We could rule this place. They don't seem to know anything. Lance frowns. What happens when they turn on us? Let's just leave. Call some cops and save these idiots. Maybe we'll get a reward. You do not want to kick this hornet's nest. King stands up, posed in a regal manner. All of you, shut the fuck up. Let's just see where this goes. Lance looks at King and reluctantly speaks. Fine, but don't complain to me when this all blows up in your face. King gestures to the audience. My people, what do I need to do to save all of you? The grail. We need the grail. King gestures out to the audience. Tell me the legend, my people. Legend says, you will find the beacons hidden across space. They will give you a path to find the grail. You will find the grail and save us all. MRLN activates. It appears that this grail is the core of the ship, and if we get it, the station will return into balance. King gives a slight bow. Very well. I shall save all of you. We will rest, feast, and party. In the morning, we will find this grail, and we will save all of you. Lance shrugs and looks to his son, whispering, This is ridiculous. As he speaks to his son, he locks eyes with a beautiful woman in the audience. The woman speaks out. They're all liars. There is no legend. They just have the codes to the station. The audience all speak in unison, looking at Gwen. Shut up, Gwen. The heroes are here. King points over to Gwen. Well, hello, lovely lady. What's your name? She responds, disgusted. I'm Guinevere. The lead mechanic of this station. The people begin to boo her. Boo! 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 King looks on all of them and puts his hands in the air. Don't worry, my people. It's important to take criticism. Gwen, please, speak with us in private. Everyone else, get ready for the party! Rejoice! Celebrate! Your troubles will end soon. As he walks back into the ship with the others... He turns away from the audience, letting down the facade of his regal demeanor back into his grisly, gross, and scummy expression of joy. The people behind him race to get ready, preparing for a massive feast and party with our main characters. The group head back to the Calvern to speak in private. And that's where we're going to end it for today. I think this turned out pretty well. They're going to meet Guinevere, get to know her. They're going to party. We're going to introduce Morgana. We're going to learn how Lance, Dread, and King all want the Grail and the reasons they want it. And then we're going to get in on a kick-ass race to see who's going to get the Grail. I had a lot of fun writing this, and I actually lost track of time and wrote a little bit longer than I normally do. I think it turned out all right, and I love this podcast. I love just sitting down and writing a couple of scenes at once a month. It just feels good. And I know this probably isn't going to get as many views as my other podcasts, but I love it. And if you're still listening to this, thank you. And I'm surprised. If you like this podcast, please rate, subscribe, comment, give YouTube, Apple, and Spotify a reach around. Do what they like to help me spread and grow. But the most important thing is that you just listen. Anyway, as always, thanks for listening. Bye.